years time the horse drawn carriages went out of business right so any technology disruption will bring some change now so there are two two angles to this right ai can be a force for good okay and, and the other part is the negative consequences type of thing so if you look at the forces for good there are so many elements which are you know ai for the good so you take education so in terms of being able to deliver personalized education etc etc ai can be a force for good into in terms of healthcare early detection of diseases looking at large data sets and being able to mine and find patterns to take agriculture for example being able to predict you know uh, weather for example or being able to predict crop patterns you know etc etc uh, you take manufacturing for example uh, predictive maintenance etc etc so if you take all of these right whether it's healthcare education manufacturing etc ai has a tremendous potential for to be a, a force for good right now there are certain jobs which are let's say repetitive you know repetitive etc which potentially could be at risk so for example if you take certain industries like you take the bpo industry for example uh, there's been a lot of work been done already even prior to the current buzz around ai about automation of a number of things bringing almost a human like interface so some of those jobs will be at risk for sure so other than job this one more thing that most of most of the people concern about ai is somewhere some kind of data is being uh, secured like deep fake videos we have seen that is because of ai so these kind of startups like what would be the future like that they can be part of the dhav or something so we do have uh, we do have a lot of startups which are working in the in, in the media space. and entertainment space building very many interesting solutions now there are i can give you several examples so i'll give you one example where for example one of the one of the areas where in the media and entertainment space where ai can be used and used as a force for good for example is uh, let's say there is a celebrity out there right and suppose you are a fan of the celebrity wouldn't be nice if uh, on a particular occasion be it a uh, a marriage or a birthday or something else you get a very personalized message from him so that's possible right today that is possible uh, similarly in other parts right so for example uh, you want to uh, in uh, again in entertainment for example there's an old movie which you've seen and there's some product placement which you want to do in, in uh, extrapolating for example a current generation car or a vehicle in an older movie or whatever all that is possible right so i think like every use of technology like i'll give you another example if you take nuclear power as an example right it has dual uses it can be used as a force for good it can also be have consequences and if you recall you know we had an explosion about 80 years ago or whatever type of thing after that we haven't had a major impact right so it i think things will evolve uh regulations will come in the i think regulators the world over are seized with the idea of how can we ensure the positive consequences the positive impact is more and the negative consequences are minimized it will happen it has happened in several other areas it will definitely happen in the ai areas so confidence so the thousands of startups that are sort of joining late i still didn't get to understand what this is but uh, there are thousands of startups which are facing funding talent and customers how do you address that so oh, very you want a very long answer or very short answer yeah, whatever you choose right so obviously the last two years have been difficult from a funding standpoint uh, 2021 was a year of irrational exuberance lots of ideas got funded whatever and it's been a slow down i think it is uh, i think some amount of rationality has returned it's a combination of circumstances i think uh, one that uh, earlier there was a lot of liquidity liquidity has become tighter there have been a few events you know the geopolitical issues etc uh, there has been some tightening by regulators financial regulators etc also i think it's fair to say that uh, many of the some of the uh, there was to some extent uh let's say too much liquidity chasing the 
uh, chasing you know too few startups so lots of people got funding done but also i think to some extent now there is pressure on uh, pressure on performance being able to demonstrate uh, you know good unit economics demonstrate a clear path to profitability etc so to that extent i think it is happening uh, also in some spaces right so obviously in consumer for example the consumer space uh, maybe you know the market is not as deep as it was thought to be you know in the sense that people look at 1.4 billion people and then think you know this large market but again then consuming or purchasing power is not uniform across the 1.4 billion so there is a you know there is a section of the population which which has access which has propen propensity to spend etc so the market was not maybe to some extent some overestimation of the size of the market so rationality is a return now and i think uh, you'll start to see now uh, you know it's like they say right uh, uh, when steel meets fire you know that's when you get good steel right? so i think uh, true metal of startups will get tested people who are solving real problems who built uh, solutions which are competitive which are differentiated which add value will continue to strive and grow so i would like to uh, again uh, speak about the media advisory that came up uh, two days ago uh, if you look carefully at the advisory uh, what he said is that uh, any uh, llm model or the deployment of an llm model should uh, should not be done to the general public without getting a sort of certification or a, a test or a testament from the government Uh, now you obviously spoke about jobs increasing, and there's obviously a race in the AI world. Everyone's trying to build an AI solution and trying to get to that scale. Uh, so it will become important for these startups, earlier stage startups, to actually go out to the public quicker as well, right? Because if if a smaller uh, startup is not able to go out to the public, then uh, there will be a disparity between the larger players who probably will get these approvals quicker than some of these smaller players. So, how do you see that? So, I'm just uh, yeah. Uh, so, from our startup side, uh, we had a long debate among the startup fraternity also about how they are looking at it and what is our thought process. So, see, one thing is that every startup founder or every individual believes in one thing that yes, regulations to an extent is important and required. You know, any solution which affects anybody's life or uh, you know uh, if there is a life and death kind of situation or the <coughs> way the society moves. If any solution is impacting that in a negative way, then obviously uh, regulation is required to stop that. That is one thing. But uh, the current uh, advisory is more for the corporates and not for the early stage startups. So here, when the the government or no one is stopping the early stage startups to think on it, because the concern was coming from the startup fraternity that if we are not allowed to experiment, how we will know that what we can build. So. today the advisory doesn't restrict people from trying out new things it is only saying that once you are launching it to for the wider population or for the bigger mass then you need to be uh, cognizant about it then you need the uh, approval and then you need to go through it but i think it's quite a balanced advisory and the startup fraternity is also quite positive about it so there is not any no one is finding any we you know uh, confusion there uh, see, uh, the problem is obviously he gave a clarification that does not Uh, apply, to apply to smaller startups, but uh, smaller startups, the customers for smaller startups are generally your bigger enterprises uh, or your bigger corporates, right? Who will then deploy it to uh, to the larger public? Correct. So uh, even then, they they will have to get in line with the compliance uh, at the end of the day, right? If you were to look at it in in a generic sense, you can say it does not apply to the startup, but eventually it would, right? Because ultimately everyone's in the same place and they're trying to build a product for. But by the time he grows bigger, right? If he has already sold it to a corporate or someone, then already like you know, uh, the corporate is taking the owners to taking it to the market. Then the corporate is having its all processes, which the startup always finds it challenging at an early stage of having that kind of internal workforce or team to support them to comply with everything. So then the corporate is having that muscle power and advantage to do the uh, scrutiny, understand the effects of it, impacts of it. and do the work so that way i think uh, startups are not impacted directly if that is a question you are asking uh, 
so at this at this point of time i don't see there is a greater impact on the innovation fraternity at least application as yeah no i think uh, some of this will evolve right uh, i think uh, it will take some time for more clarity to emerge uh, so i think we should uh, assume that uh, obviously policy makers are seized of the problem uh, they want to be they want to tread cautiously uh, and ultimately i think it's not just going to be uh, it's a combination of making sure that uh, the certain amount of oversight a certain amount of regulation uh, and also at the same time not uh, you know restricting or uh, you know uh, putting fetters on the you know, on creativity and you know inter- innovation right i think some balance i don't think there's a there's a let's say there's no single silver bullet to it it will it will emerge like many other things have emerged Uh, Sorry. You were speaking about deepfakes. Sorry. Deepfakes. If I could add to that, considering that the elections are coming up, um, I see multiple takeouts as well as central governments looking at this issue particularly. Even your KYC issue with particular startups like Paytm, uh, some of the deepfake problems were with regards to uh, KYC. In some of the video KYC we bypassed through, through some of these deepfakes. So would there be particular sectors? Where regulation will have to come in quicker than the others, uh, because AI is obviously very important. So I think I think the obviously the bigger things would be in the financial services space clearly, because there you know there could be fin you know fraud right like of the kind you talked about right uh, perpetuated by you know, perpetuated on the unsuspecting public right. So I think the financial sector anyway by default because. so much fiduciary responsibility etc is required i think that's where you'll start to see a lot more type of thing and obviously some of the points you talked about right in the election season you know, uh, we've had obviously things like morphing and all have been around for a long time uh, you probably see you know something more we we will find some some solutions i don't think there's a anyone has a uh, yeah absolutely <laughs> But, but uh, just one last thing, because this is one of the only spaces where multiple entities, both the government, corporate, and your VCs are coming together. Uh, and you've spoken about the funding and tech sector, but has the sentiments on the government investing in startups remained intact throughout? No, I think they have done a lot. The startup seed fund, then the initiatives through SIDB, uh, they announced even in the interim budget uh, fund for innovation, which they are going to do. i guess we'll have to wait for the larger budget post the election to see how that becomes more concrete but i don't think there has been any uh, you know uh, slow down from a government perspective uh, in terms of i think they recognize that the startup sector is creating jobs so if you say the last 10 years close to about 1.2 million plus jobs have been created by startups right so they see this as an engine of economic growth right and i think they'll continue to support it and we've now built in the last uh, last let's say 11 to 12 years uh, we are now the third largest ecosystem right correct uh, 120000 plus startups etc so i think uh, the government will continue to be supportive of what's happening in the startup space rahul ji since you are handling ml for innovation how would you ensure the quality of the data which is very interesting So see, uh, quality of the data. How we are going to enable startups to look into it is that we are also working from our side to provide data as much as possible for the uh, startups. And when I say data for the startups, we are providing that access. So there are different uh, bodies, uh, be it private or be it public, who have this data and who want to work with the startups to build such solutions. We are trying to bridge those gaps. Uh, so that startups can get easy access to the data and once they get the right data that itself is a big step towards quality data second is that uh, when you are building any ai model uh, how you curate e- your data is the fundamental uh, curation of the data or what we call in certain te- uh, wordings like annotation or structuring of the data there are different words that you put it so for that we are coming up with a platform or we have come with a platform where startups can come and they can curate their data 
they can structure their data in a better way to train their algorithm. I think these two are most important and pertinent steps for having a quality data, which obviously have a quality uh, impact on the quality outcome. Mo, you had a question? I want to chat both of you there before the minister comes, sir. So when it comes to approval, uh, is it like uh, the you know, startup companies are feeling like uh, the email is getting approved very really late from the ground? So, what can. Uh, mm, what context, sir? For example, IIT Chennai has uh, come up with the e plane from the and they got approved last year from 2009. So, why is this delay is happening? Uh, I'm not sure I can offer a comment on that. I really can't. I'm not familiar with the context of that specific question. So we'll talk offline on that. Uh, okay, so if there are no further questions, uh, thank you for your time. Thank you for coming. And uh, look forward, I think, uh, we'll just check on the, on the minister coming in. Uh, <coughs> hopefully, we'll get started fairly soon. Thank sure. you for your time. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. So we'll Today, we stand at the precipice of a transformative era, a time when the flourishing era of artificial intelligence is reshaping the contours of innovation worldwide. And now, to mark this commencement of this landmark event, it is our privilege to have with us our visionary leader, Sri Mahankali Srinivas Rao. I would like to request him to come upon the stage to share his thoughts and insight from T Hub's perspective. Respected Honorable Minister Garu, uh, Special Chief Secretary to the Government of Telangana, Jayesh Ranjan Garu, respected members of the board, uh, T-Hub colleagues, startup founders, uh, ecosystem partners, welcome to the launch of MATH. So AI has been in the news, particularly in the last two years. We all are familiar with ChatGPT uh, and you know the significant impact it has had. Uh, but if you think about it, AI has been around for a long time. AI has been around for more than, has been talked about for almost 20 plus years, but finally it's coming to fruition. Right? So when you think about it, when you use Google Maps today, it uses AI. If you use an Uber or an Ola, it uses AI. AI is uh, at an inflection point today, and I'm going to share with you some numbers on estimates of the market size with AI. So according to Gartner, the global AI market for software is going to be about $297 billion by 2027. There's a report done by BCG and NASCOM which says in the next three years, which is till 2027, the demand for AI services in India itself will be about $17 billion. $17 billion. Right. So a tremendous opportunity. Uh, just like we, India built a play in software and services, we have an opportunity to create a large market for AI, both platforms and services. In terms of what we are trying to do here, I think we are all aware that AI can have far-reaching impact in every aspect of our lives and our businesses. So if you take education, education can make, uh, AI can make quality education affordable, it can make it very personalized. If you take manufacturing, and we are seeing many of our startups already doing interesting work in the areas of uh, predictive maintenance, quality control, and so on. In agriculture, where still 50% of our population is still in agriculture, agriculture to bo boost farm productivity, to reduce the usage of uh, soil damaging fertilizers, and so on. Healthcare, again, we have a lot of interesting startups, uh, including, you know, we saw some which are doing uh, accelerating drug discovery, which typically takes two to three billion dollars to bring it down to, you know, over a 10 year period to bring it down to three to four years at a much lower cost and so on. Then of course e-commerce where hyper-personalization, on-demand services, etc. Financial services, prevention of fraud, you know, pre using uh, again uh, uh, risk management techniques, etc. using AI. Right, so with all of this, we believe that uh, the opportunity for us to build on what we have done, and I'm going to share very quickly what we've done at T-Hub in the last one year. We've been in this building now for close to 20 months. In the last one year, we have launched, for example, the, the Atle Innovation Center, where we're focusing on startups in healthcare, in mobility, in sustainability, and semiconductor. 
So this project has been a dream project for us. We worked on this for almost four years with the Department of Science and Technology. And in line with the stated mission of the minister to set up Hyderabad as the AI capital, we believe this is a very significant initiative where we are going to bring the ecosystem together. And at this point of time, as my colleague Rahul Seth, who's the Rahul Peth, who's the CEO of AI, uh, the AI, the Math Center, will tell you, we already have 62 startups in the space, and we believe this ecosystem which we are building in T Hub, where we bring together startups, corporates, funding agencies, government bodies, obviously industry associations, we have a huge opportunity to work together to create and make AI the buzzword in Telangana, in Hyderabad, and obviously in India. So with that, I'd like to now request my colleague Rahul, uh, who's been with us now for a few months, to come in and talk to you about what exactly we are doing in, in this center. Thank you. So it's a great privilege uh, to welcome all of you and to lead this initiative. So as MSR has mentioned, uh, this was a joint initiative by DST and T-Hub, and it took us a couple of years to do it. So I thank all the stakeholders before I start saying about what we are going to do, uh, starting from all the board of uh, directors of T-Hub, all the founding directors, all the stakeholders within T-Hub, external uh, to T-Hub, and all the stakeholders from DST for making this dream come ha uh, happen. And uh, to start with, if I have to tell you, like as we know, AIML is having huge opportunity across the country AIML is having a lot of innovation that we are seeing. As uh, days are passing, we are seeing a lot of startups are coming, a lot of new initiatives are taken, a lot of corporates are doing a lot of things. So what we are going to do in math uh, so that we can actually support all this innovation, we can support the country, we can support all the startups and innovations to take the next step forward. To start with, uh, I just want to give you a glimpse in terms of math, what we are going to launch and what we are going to offer. So as a next slide, so here I'm going to talk about the different offerings that we are having. So apart from the co-working space that we are offering, and probably, okay. So before I go with the co-working space and the offerings, probably uh, our team has built a wonderful video. So I'd like all of you to have a look at it, which actually tells our story. And once we look at the video, then I will elaborate more on that. So Anirudh, if you can help with the video. Thank you. Artificial intelligence and machine learning are not just buzzwords. They're shaping our lives in ways we couldn't have imagined a decade ago. And India has the potential to be at the forefront of this technological revolution. Today, we invite you to be part of an extraordinary journey as we unveil math, machine learning and artificial intelligence technology hub, an ecosystem for AI and ML innovators. We are the center of excellence for AI and ML, supported by the Department of Science and Technology and T-Hub. With the vision to have AI everywhere, we empower AI and ML entrepreneurs with a comprehensive support system. Math brings you five distinctive offerings. Math Lab, a mini data center equipped with GPUs offering a robust infrastructure for developing, training, and deploying AI models. Mad Lake, a centralized repository designed to store and secure data, helping startups harness their data resources. Accelerator programs. These programs are designed to guide startups and transform their visions into reality. They encompass a variety of methods, such as workshops, boot camps, and masterclasses, along with peer-to-peer -peer learning opportunities, like startup mixers and collaborative sessions among founders. Nuage, a global virtual collaboration platform that provides support on mentorship, funding assistance, data resources, and market expansion opportunities for startups. Name, Nurturing AI Minds, an immersive learning management system, providing access to curated education, resources, training modules, and workshops on AI and ML technologies. Math also cultivates the next generation of AI or ML talent through the AI Career Finder, facilitating seamless connections between startups in search of top talent and candidates looking for exciting opportunities. Additionally, math empowers startups to leverage a pool of value partners, mentors, and investors. Math is a powerful tool for social change, bridging gaps in education, employment, community, and quality of life through sectors like healthcare, manufacturing, 
security, and more. Math is committed to making a significant impact at the bottom of the pyramid by creating jobs, ensuring that the benefits of AI and ML extend to the most underserved communities. Math strives to enhance accessibility, supporting innovations for today and tomorrow, and making AI solutions available. To join us on this exciting journey of innovation, visit our website at mathub.ai and stay in touch at contact at mathub.ai. Right direction and doing a lot of exciting work. Just to give you some idea about what all things we are offering, as you know, uh, we are part of T-Hub. We are supported by DST. Obviously, we will support and provide all the things that uh, T-Hub provides to start cater and support the startups. But apart from that, we are working extensively to build a lot of infrastructure in terms of physical and uh, cloud infrastructure. So st uh, to start with, first is MathLab. MathLab is our GPU data uh, center that in collaboration with Pi Data Center, we have established it within our premises. And today, we will also inaugurate it. Along with that, we have MathNodge. MathNodge is a new initiative which, through virtual platform, helps us to onboard and cater to startups across India, irrespective of their geographic location and within Telangana. Naim is a new initiative where we have taken, it's a learning management system which helps us to train, skill, and upskill the students' community, the practitioner community, and the entire workforce to make them understand, teach, and train them on AI ML technologies. And then we have MadLeg. When we talk about AI, it's all about data. And MadLeg is an initiative under which we are helping startups to get the data. Also, the platform helps us to manage, monetize, and store the data. So which is a revolution that we have got within T-Hub, within math, for the startups. We do have a co-working space that all of us are aware of. And then there is the first of its kind job portal, AI Career Finder, which is dedicated only for AI job opportunities. So this portal, we are going to launch it today. And uh, the objective of this portal is to bridge the gap between the student community, the working community, and the startup and the corporates so that they can find uh, relevant AI jobs for them. And also, we have the LMS platform, which is filling the gap of training and uh, uh, teaching people on, in terms of AI technologies. Moving on to next, we just want to give you a quick glimpse in last couple of months what all we have achieved. And thanks to all the hard work that T-Hub team has done in last eight years. And because of that, when we launched, we got very quickly, we were able to get 200 plus mentors, 90 plus innovation partners, 100 value partners, and also 20 plus investors. And all these people that we are bringing from the ecosystem are having a great and a focused focus uh, on deep tech and AI. Along with that, it, I'm very excited to mention that when we opened our application, we got 2,000 plus AI startups applied for positions and they wanted to be part of our ecosystem. We have onboarded only 62 of them as on date and we have plans of launching this virtual program so that we can onboard most of them or maximum of them as soon as possible. So with these kind of numbers, I am excited to mention and I'm very confident to mention that we are definitely going to change the world and make Hyderabad the AI capital for India, for the world. Coming on to last slide that I have, it gives a rough uh, landscape of the AI startups that we are having. And this is just to give you a glimpse that we have covered uh, our startups are working across the industry. They are in healthcare, they are in energy, they are in green tech, clean tech, and across the sector. And all this are just like hand-picked few startups I'm talking about and not the entire 2,000 startups that we have in our ecosystem. So with coming months and with all of your support, I'm hopeful that we will bring a revolution in the field of AI and we will make math, T-Hub, Telangana to make a mark in the global map. Whenever you are talking about AI, you should talk about math, you should talk about Telangana, and you should remember T-Hub. That's the whole idea. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Rahul, for taking us through Matt's journey so far. Next, he's a pivotal figure in our journey who has been instrumental in fostering the growth of T-Hub, and we are privileged to have him with us today. 
I would like to request Shri Bivian Mohan Reddy, board member at T-Hub, founder and chairman of Scient, to share his thoughts in a special address. Honorable Minister for uh, IT and Industry, uh, Sri Sridhar Babugaru, our uh, Chief Secretary, uh, Additional Chief Secretary and uh, Industry Secretary Jayesh Ranjangaru, my fellow directors on the board, uh, my young friends, ladies and gentlemen, a very good evening uh, to all of you. I'm sorry we're running uh, a bit uh, late for the event. Uh, I'm sorry about the scheduling issues that we had. But we're very delighted to uh, welcome you all on behalf of the board of directors of uh, T-Hub for this uh, momentous occasion of uh, inaugurating uh, math, which is uh, machine learning, artificial intelligence, technology hub. That's, I believe, the whole expansion for math would be. About uh, five years back, it was um, 2020, NASCOM uh, Executive Council offsite, uh, probably about 20 to 25 of the top CEOs of uh, IT industry were sitting together in trying to look at what the future looks like for all of us through the decade. And that's when uh, we coined the word, the technology will play an enormous amount of role. And uh, therefore, um, it was um, one of them who came out with this acronym called Tech Aid. It will be a technology decade. So you add technology with decade, it becomes Tech Aid. But we again uh, met in Jodhpur, uh, uh, late last uh, year, and uh, it was not the same group, but a fairly large subset of the group. And we said, what does lo life look like now? They said, we have to take back tech aid. It has to become AI decade. That is how AI is progressing at this point of time. And it certainly beats the imagination of everybody. Anybody comes and tells me, that you know, look, I predicted this to happen, I would say this is all falsehood. It's baloney to me. To give you a flavor of how things are progressing, just to give you a number on the acceleration right now, uh, a small subset of AI, which is Chat GPT, took just five days, which was launched in end of 2022. Uh, within five days, it got one million users. To give you a data point, uh, comparatively speaking, Spotify took five months, Twitter took two years to get one million users. That's the speed at which ChatGPT went forward. They got their 100 million users in two months. So I'm just trying to give you a flavor of how big is this opportunity at this point of time and how quickly it will grow and also how rapidly it has evolved not many of us have predicted that this is the evolution of technology. The, uh, uh, it was very interesting, as I read this article, where um, Fortune 500 CEOs, in their uh, quarterly um, uh, calls, uh, quarterly earnings calls, in uh, Q4 of 2022, uh, somebody took note of these numbers, 28 times generative AI was mentioned. Whereas uh, in Q3 earnings call, Q324, uh, in the earning, uh, earnings call, it was mentioned 2,081 times. That's what the generative AI or the power of AI is. Let me then give you a flavor to all my young friends who are all looking at AI as what uh, holds uh, as um, potential financial or um, business opportunity for all of us. This is a study that was done by McKinsey. McKinsey went and uh, reviewed several sectors of industry. I think uh, Rahul talked about uh, many areas at this point of time. So they went and interviewed um, technology, media, telecom, um, healthcare, industrial clients all around, and asked them how, um, uh, how they felt about generative AI as a means by which it will start changing their businesses. And in technology, media, and telecom, 90% of the clients said that will be an extremely high impact in coming three years. The second one was healthcare, where 50% of the CEOs said it will have an 
Medium, no, it's also high impact, but as industrial was at 40% uh, of them saying it will be a medium impact. So you can understand how big is going to be the impact. If you then convert that into dollars and cents, uh, again, this was an estimate that was done. They're saying that generative AI alone, we will not talk about market potential, amount of money that can be saved in the next five years between all sectors is to the extent of $4 trillion. So that money is not going to go away somewhere. People will invest that money in making sure this technology will become much more stronger. One good um, uh, future indicator, forward indicator as I keep calling it, is about uh, how uh, venture capitalists are doing at this point of time. So therefore, you need to be very, very involved with the academia to ensure you get these holistic products which can survive forever. And lastly, what will make you different, dif what will differentiate you is making sure you continuously innovate. These products will become obsolete. The way in which the technology is moving will get obsolete very quickly unless you start moving the, the, in the direction of saying, I am continuously looking at innovation to see what is next for me. I actually uh, went through the stalls and most of the people I was asking this question, what is next? I didn't, much, I didn't get the right answers from many of them. Maybe a few of them I did. So my request to all of you is develop that agile culture in making sure innovation becomes the lifeline for you. Thank you and very good luck to all of you and congratulations to TIAB on the inauguration of this particular uh, lab. Thank you. Thank you, sir, for your kind words and sharing invaluable insights with us. We would like you to kindly stay on the stage to express our gratitude and felicitate our guest of honor for today. We would now like to express our heartfelt gratitude and take the privilege to extend a token of appreciation to our honorable minister for gracing us with his presence today. I would like to invite Shriman Kali Shinivas Rao to join us on the stage along with our esteemed minister, Sri Shridhar Babu Dudila and Sri Jay Shranjan, as a symbol of our sincere appreciation for their unwavering support and encouragement towards math and in making this event a grand success. I would like to request the respected dignitaries to be on the stage for the logo launch. I would like to request Sri Anish Anthony, Sri Sujit Jagardar, and Sri Rahul Pad to join us for the launch. We request you, sir, to kindly. <laughs> The Machine Learning and Artificial Intelligence Technology Hub aims to be the pioneering center of excellence of its kind and drives AI evolution and shapes tomorrow's world. The logo, of, the logo for math is a strong, stable, yet dynamic unit that represents the vision we have for AI's future, one that is dynamic and fast-paced, yet helps shape a better future for all of us. As we continue our journey, let's delve into the remarkable offerings that math extends to our community. I'm thrilled to introduce the Learning Management System, a dynamic platform crafted to not only skill, but upskill individuals spanning from students to startup founders and corporate employees. This innovative platform is a gateway to continuous learning, fostering growth, and expertise in the rapidly evolving field of technology. In a groundbreaking collaboration, Math is partnering with Apposite Learning Solutions. Together, they're implementing the award-winning learning management system, Acume, for math. I would like to welcome Mr. Vishakananda, Director of Instructions and Designs at Apposite, to join us on the stage for the launch.
but that's not where the story ends. Matt takes a step further by introducing a dedicated job portal, seamlessly bridging the gap between learning and practical application. This portal serves as a vital link, connecting skilled individuals with opportunities that align with their expertise. I request Honorable Minister to launch the job portal called AI Career Finder. As you can see, the jobs listed on the site are all from our startups, and in a few weeks, we intend to list job requirements of more than 20 startups on this portal where candidates can build their profiles and apply for jobs. Further fortifying our technological infrastructure, we will have the launch of Math Data Center now. I'm happy to announce that Math Lab, in collaboration with Pi Data Centers, have established a data center in the T-Hub premise to enable startups leverage next generation cloud native technologies. With this, I welcome Shri Kalyan Aim, the founder and CEO of Pi Data Center, for the launch of Math Lab. We request you, sir, to kindly press the button for the launch. The image you see on the screen is the picture of the data center at, the, at our premises, which has been created in collaboration with Pi Data Center. We are thrilled to announce a pivotal moment in our journey of math. Exchange a MAU, forging a dynamic partnership to redefine the landscape and innovation. I request MSR and Kalia Main to exchange the MAU. I thank everyone for doing the honor. And I would like to request the Honorable Item Minister, Sri Sridhar Babu, to stay back on the stage and offer his thought on making this auspicious event within the thriving ecosystem of math. Uh, I just thought of saying good afternoon to all, but it's good evening. Good evening to all. And sorry for the inordinate delay, mostly my schedule has been occupied for the productive purposes for enhancing the state skill for tomorrow's future. You know, I am, in fact, it's my pleasure and too happy for one more center has been added to our intellectual property of this state, that is math. We shall prove as a powerhouse in intel artificial intelligence. Thanks, Rajiv, and thanks, MSR. And special thanks to BVR Mohan Tritigaru and all the effort which has been put by our special CS, Jayesh Ranjan and his team, and all the players who have been instrumental in making this happen. Uh, I welcome all other players who would be instrumental to make the vision of the new government, especially with uh, the leader and our chief minister, Raven Reddy, and our government vision to make, as told by Mohan Reddy Garu, we would like to make this city, Telangana, as the artificial intelligence capital for the global world. So with this, I think uh, math is the first step. You know, we are here to talk about artificial intelligence and machine learning. You know, these are the buzzwords everywhere we go, everywhere we see. Even if you go to a restaurant to have a tea or a coffee or to the best dinner, and many new restaurants, you know, are also thinking of putting AI into their picture. 
so it is not confined to intelligence it's you know it's intelligence only to it and uh, it related services but it's all related to each and every sphere of our life now you know coming taking in this into aspect our government has also thought of putting everything into action as not only speaking we have to put everything into action right now because as told you know if you are not clear on our learning process and we are if you are not in a continuous journey to innovate we become obsolete as rightly told by bhai mohan reddy garu if we have to stand pace with the new technologies either it may be in ai machine learning or the normal software we have to keep abreast of the new innovations new technologies and we have to keep innovating within ourselves so in the process we just thought of uh, putting everything to action right tomorrow's world should be the artificial intelligence world for that uh, government has uh, in the recent budget has allocated about 200 acres of land to build the artificial intelligence city so we are not here to just tell and speak but we believe in action that the first step what we had taken and the next step is you know we are planning for a global ai summit in the month of july and uh, the special cs jayesh ranjan is already closed in dates the global ai summit which will be held in hyderabad will be on july 1st and 2nd in hyderabad why we are holding the global artificial intelligence summit you know everybody knows about it you know it's not only a place hyderabad is not only a place which can have which can keep keep pace with uh, other artificial intelligence players but we want to surge ahead to surge ahead we would like to see you know all the global players of the ai our machine learning should be here should deliberate to think of new technologies think of new ideas and uh, their ideas to translate into action we have to give all the facilities on behalf of the government so for that reason we just thought of sharing our idea with the global players in the ai summit tomorrow which will be held in july we would be discussing lot many things there are lot of key players here who are involved in ai and in the process hopefully the math also will be collaborating with many intelligent uh, you know very uh, intelligent and also global players here maybe you know they would also seek the math collaboration for their states and also for the international uh, countries so here we started first we would be the first and we would take it further in terms of our uh, presence in india as well as in the global arena hopefully this will happen in two more months of time the young entrepreneurs who are here the prospective and the budding entrepreneurs who th their gray matter they just want to infuse to bring about the new products definitely you know this platform will create lot many lot many new innovations and we believe in it and uh, we would like to you know really cooperate and give all the strength for the team here in the t hub you know i am proud to say that just now you know msr told me about the core ai a hyderabad ai company is a new unicorn is a new unicorn and i congratulate this core ai company and in fact it has added one more feather to a crab that it is a fourth unicorn hopefully you know in this math 
in times to come in years times to come many more unicorns may come hopefully that will bring laurels to the state of telangana and to hyderabad city as you all know you know we have a legacy of innovation we had made a remarkable contributions to ai research i am proud to say that we have a staggering 1774 publications to its name on ai our strength lies in robotics and computer vision accounting for woofing 61% of the patent filings in the state so apart from that we have many universities which have cracked the top 1000 global uh, computer research publications you know one among them is triple it and indian institute of technology hyderabad ranking an impressive 508 rank and 552 rank respectively you know it's not about the research in ai it's about making an impact for the real world you know we are driving ground breaking ai projects that are changing lives from quality assessment of agriculture products to the pensioner verification through selfies and your pothole detection and mapping hyderabad as such as you all know is attracting ai talent and innovation in big way our thriving startup ecosystem fosters cutting edge solutions in healthcare agriculture and finance major multinational corporations are setting up research and development centers here recognizing the immense potential hyderabad holds you know ai as i said in the initial uh, remarks that ai is there in every field in every sector even it is a social sector or it is a finance or it is education any sector you mention ai is there now in initial stages so if we take a plunge and search we would be the leaders otherwise you know even you uttar pradesh a state like uttar pradesh is surging forward surging ahead they may become our leaders so we shouldn't give a space or hold of any technology which shall surge way ahead of hyderabad and telangana so let us put our hands together and make this happen the future hyderabad should become the future telangana should become the capital and epicenter of artificial intelligence here back in hyderabad and let's be proud of one more feather as we are stand here we are the in india we are the pharma capital we are almost near to uh, it capital here and uh, we are capital for many things and we would be the captain for the artificial intelligence for tomorrow and with these few words i once again you know appeal to all the young entrepreneurs the budding entrepreneurs the innovators let us all come together as you all know there are 2000 applications which have come before this math few have been selected few are more going to get selected and the selection is absolutely very clear and impartial very transparent and always helping and aiding the best brains of this state and also people coming all around from the global arena i wish you all the best and good luck and thanks to the t hub thank you to all the startups and corporates and investors who have partners and who shown faith in this venture and joined us on this exciting journey your support means a lot to us and we eagerly anticipate fostering an environment of innovation growth and success with you last but not to the least your pre your presence has added immense value to this event sir in conclusion the lack of engagement with ai ml is like inflation it eats up before we realize its damage math is more than just a center it is a shared dream 
a collective endeavor and a commitment to making AI ML solutions affordable, accessible, and acceptable for the grassroots. We hope that this is just the beginning of many more breakthroughs in AI ML. Thank you very much, sir.